Welcome to the Westcott Crochet Channel and welcome to my very first featured dress. Actually this one can also be a top in regular length or cropped. Just stop adding rounds when you're ready. I stopped today at a mini dress but I'm thinking I'm going to go maxi. I just need more yarn. If you like this one send a message to YouTube by tapping the thumbs up button. To see more projects do please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. You can now also follow me on Instagram where I try and post a sneaky peek at upcoming tutorials. Any yarn recommending a 4mm hook will create a similar result. I use the recommended 4mm. I also used a few little beads, tape measure, stitch markers and a yarn needle to weave in my ends. Working with my 4mm hook, I'm going to make a chain that goes around the widest part of my body. At this point, decide whether you want to make a crop top, a regular length top or a dress. For me, I'm actually going to work to a hip measurement and that gives me the option to make a dress or to have a slightly loose fitting top. The chain needs to be a multiple of seven chains. So I'm going to chain 140. I've just worked 20 chains so far. To make sure that my chain isn't twisted, I'm just going to pop the first loop onto the end of my hook. And then when I chain on, it can't twist. I have 140 chains. I pull my working loop through the first chain that I put onto the end of my hook and I've now formed a loop without any twists. Working back in the direction I just started, so occur towards the pointy end of each chain. I've chained one to build up my yarn and I'm going to work six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Six only for this first one. I'm working in batches of seven but number seven for this first batch is going to be the last stitch all the way around the other side. So six to start, chain two, and then starting in the very next stitch, so no, no gaps, I'm going to make seven single crochets. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to make seven more single crochets. Chain two, seven more, chain two, seven more. All the way around to the end where I should end with a chain two and one single crochet to finish the round. All the way back around to the start I've just chained two and worked my last stitch. I make sure that my loop hasn't twisted and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain one that I started the round with. And I'm going to turn around and make sure I've got my whole loop as well because some of that's come off. Okay, so turn around and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain two space that I've just made because that's where I'm going to start the next round. So for round two, I'm going to start working in treble crochets. And I'm actually going to start with a treble, so I want to work a standing treble. I'll show you how that works in a minute. If you can't get to grips with this, have a little practice first, but if you can't manage, then just do a chain four in place of the first treble crochet. So I pull up my yarn, the height of a treble crochet, I plant my finger on my working loop, and I wrap the loop once, twice, around my hook so I've actually got three loops. I'm going to go into the chain two space, yarn over, pull through a loop. So I've now got four loops. Yarn over, pull through two, finger still holding that loop. Yarn over, pull through two. I can now let go of the loop. Yarn over, pull through the last two. I'll replay that in case you missed it. So I pull up my yarn the height of a treble crochet, I plant my finger on my working loop, 
and I wrap the loop once, twice around my hook. So I've actually got three loops. I'm going to go into the chain two space, yarn over, pull through a loop. So I've now got four loops. Yarn over, pull through two, finger still holding that loop. Yarn over, pull through two. I can now let go of the loop. Yarn over, pull through the last two. So that's the first treble crochet. So from here, whether you've worked your standing the treble or your chain four, chain two, and work a regular treble crochet. So yarn over twice, in through the same chain two space, pull up the loop, pull through two, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two. And chain two, and I'm gonna work another treble crochet. Chain two, and one more treble crochet, all in that same chain two space. There we go. Then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to work a treble crochet into the next chain two space. And this pattern is just a whole lot of treble crochets and chain twos. As complicated as it looks, it's actually that easy. So chain two, treble crochet into the same space. Chain two, another treble crochet. Chain two, and another treble crochet. So that's the first round. Chain two again, another four treble crochets in the next chain two space with two chains between each and just work that way the whole way around. At the end of round one, I've just worked my last set of four treble crochets. Chain two. And if I go to my first treble crochet, and I'm going to work a slip stitch into the top of that stitch. So if you've chained four, you work your slip stitch into your fourth chain. And that closes the round. For round two, I'm going to come back in where I just came. So, turn around. And I need to slip stitch around this chain two. And I need to slip stitch into this first space in my cluster of four treble crochets. So I've gone from here to inside here. And this is where I'm going to work my first set of four treble crochets. So chain four, or for me, a standing treble. Chain two. And then three more trebles in that same space. Three more trebles with the chain two in between. So I'll show you what that looks like if I can. So I'll chain two. And next I jump into this space, into the next set of trebles, into the first space. And this is the only space that I'm working into in each set of four. So I've chained two, do my next set of four, chain twos here. Yeah. Four trebles with chain twos in between. There we go. 
So my next set of four is in here and chain two and work those. Chain two and work my next four into the next one, into the next one, into the next one, and all the way around. That's the end of round two. I've just substitched into the top of my first treble crochet where I started the row. Again, for round three, I turn to work back in the other direction, slip stitch around the chain, slip stitch into the first gap, and start again with a cluster of four treble crochets. Four in the next one, four in the next one, and all the way around. And that's pretty much it. There's just a whole lot of that round and round in circles. And the, the direction change makes it sort of a bit 3D. So this section sticks out a bit each time. So just keep going round and around until you get the length that you want, be it a crop top, a regular length top or a dress. And I'll meet you back. I've just worked up the length of a regular top, which for me was 20 rounds. This is how that looks. I don't know if you can see the pattern there. So once you've got the length for the main section, you need to start all over again and make two sleeves. And I've just chained the circumference of a sleeve, multiples of seven chains. Started with my single crochet row, six single crochet, chain two, seven single crochet, chain two, seven single crochet, chain two, ending with one single crochet at the end and then start the pattern again and just work the length of a sleeve and then make another one and just show you on a sleeve the benefit of mastering the uh, standing treble crochet this is where I've changed direction it's indicated by the tail end and it's invisible you really can't see the difference so it makes a nice seamless sleeve and also obviously the body section so it's worth giving it a bit of a practice just to try and master that I think with the chain four it works but you'll be able to see the difference between a chain four and an actual treble crochet stitch so it will make you seem a little bit more visible i've gone ahead and attached one of my sleeves i'm going to show you how i do the other one so for me the circumference of my sleeve i have eight of these chain two spaces all around the top and I've attached it with three of them so I've got the rest just open so it's less than half so with eight I've attached three I'm going to do the same on the other side so I'm attaching the top of the sleeve and the top of the body section is where I started with the row of single crochet so in both instances that's the top so at this point if you try on this body section and just find out where you want your sleeves to be where you want them to start for me i've started at the exact halfway point on either side so it's right at the the two edges um but if you've got a little bit more going on up front you might want to set your sleeves back a little further so that you're not stretching this front section more than the back so as I say, for me, I've just gone for the halfway point and I've matched up a chain two space at the halfway point with chain two space on my sleeve. And then I've gone to the other one on either side. It's not important that you work around the chain two spaces. That just happens to be where the centre fell for me. If your centre falls into in, in the middle, then just work around that as long as you're getting a good portion third ratio roughly of your sleeve attached to the same area of the body. So for me, as I say, I went for the chain two space, matched it up on the side and one on either side. So I'm just going to take that out and put my hook in through both sides. Add on a slip knot, pull it through and chain one and then I'm just going to work the tops of these stitches whilst working in my tail end 
and put one single crochet through both sides into each stitch from here to here. I've worked across my little join, chained one to secure, cut my arm, whip that through. So next I'm at the centre of the back of the body section, you can see where I started with my original tail end. Hook goes into the chain two space, on with a slip knot and pull it through. Chain one to secure. I'm going to work a standing treble or you can chain four. And then I'm going to work eight more trebles in this same space to form a fan. So that's nine in total for the shell. Jumping over to the next chain two space, I'm going to make nine more. I'm going to jump to the next one, nine more, all the way around. When I get to my sleeve, where I've joined the sleeve, I've got two chain two spaces. I'm going to skip the one that's on the body and jump to the one on the sleeve. Out the other side, I've got the same situation, so I'll work the sleeve again and skip the body chain two. Here we are at the sleeve, and as I mentioned, because I joined my sleeve at a chain two space, I have two chain two spaces, so I've skipped the one at the body, gone straight to the sleeve and worked my nine. And now I'm going to work around the outside of the sleeve, just working the fans all the way around the outside edge of the sleeve. We don't work this join section anymore. So around the outside of the sleeve, all the way across the back, around the outside of the second sleeve, and back to the start. I've worked my shells all the way around the edge. As always, to close the round, slip stitch into the top of the first treble crochet or the fourth chain. Chain one to secure, pull that tight, cut my arm, and pull it through. So I've added a drawstring to my top, or what will be a dress potentially. And I happen to have some little beads, so I've just added those onto the end of the drawstrings. I'm going to show you how to make this next. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use these two little odd ends that I've got. We do need two different lengths of yarn. So I recommend that you wind a separate small ball from your main ball if you haven't got two separate balls. You need three times the amount the length of your cord so however long you want your cord to be three times that amount wind off that amount of cord so i'm just going to take the two lengths and make a slip knot and from here we'll call yellow my main yarn and blue the secondary so I hold my main yarn as normal and I come up with the blue yarn up over the front and around the back and then I pull yellow main yarn through because I don't drop off normally 
over with the blue, round and through with the yellow, over with the blue, yarn over and through with the yellow. And that's literally all there is to it. Just over and over until you get the length that you need. It's oddly quite addictive as you get going. Obviously, I just used the one colour, but this was just for demonstration purposes. However, if you ever need a multicoloured cord, this is a good way to go. So it actually works up and it's quite stretchy, which is good again for cord. Um, so yeah, just keep going, work up the length that you need and come back. I don't know whether you can see, I've weaved my cord through, through the chain two spaces that I used to create the shells for this top row. And I've just gone in and out, in and out all the way around. My center at the front is just one shell, so I've come out of the same spot. If you're between two shells, then just this one and this one will be fine and just come out of two. Um, I also had the wrong amount of holes, so I had one facing up and one feeding back. So I've just fudged it a little bit around the arm here, around the, shell, um, the sleeve and just come through a second hole to make it right. So whatever you need to do, it's all good. It's going to work. And there's your little drawstring. Right, weave in the ends and all done. If you do all of that, you'll have yourself one of these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. A huge thank you to those who already have. And to everyone, thank you for watching today.